BenQ SMU series of hardware calibrated displays are displays that are designed specifically for photographers and other creative professionals. What makes this display great is that it comes with a lot of preset color modes so you can actually quickly toggle with the hockey puck and go in and preview your pictures in those color modes. Many of those times when you go into those specific color modes that are preset from the factory, they can be too bright. They're not displaying the proper luminance so when you're viewing your pictures, you're not viewing your pictures in that color space at the proper brightness. So in this video, what I'd like to do is show you how you can actually use the i1 profiler or any, in this case, if you have another calibration software, you can use that too, to kind of do a hack on the preset color mode that's built into the display and bring the luminance down so that you're viewing the proper brightness on there. Now for best results, I still recommend that you do a proper hardware calibration using the Palette Master Element, that's BenQ proprietary software with their display. However, in this case, if you need to to proof your work really quickly in a different color space, this is the way to do it. I'm Arts One Sang, I'm a BenQ brand ambassador, and let's get right into this. So right here, I have a BenQ SW270C. This is BenQ latest 2K hardware calibrated display that they just came up with. And I've really been doing a lot of testing. You can check out my video. I put a link up right above here. You can click on that. Now here's the case. With this display, it comes with and all the BenQ SW series of display, it comes with preset mode from the factory. So for instance, I'm already in Adobe RGB, but if I want to see a smaller color space or what most people will be seeing, I can always go and toggle it to, for instance, sRGB. And this is the picture in sRGB mode. In fact, they also have an advanced black and white mode that you can kind of view here. Now, many times when you toggle and you switch between these modes, the brightness changes a little bit. Now, BenQ has been really good with listening to the customer feedback and they actually dial down the brightness for these preset modes quite a bit. So before we can go in and set the custom luminance for this advanced black and white mode, what I need to do is turn the display back to color first because if I don't, I1 profiler is gonna give me an error in the reading of the luminance value. So now that I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize Lightroom, let's do that. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch I1 profiler. Now, in this case, if you have another software, for example, if you use a data color device, you can go ahead and use that too. It should work the exact same way. All right, so what I'm going to do here is wait for the program to recognize my i1 Display Pro. Right there. So i1 Profiler has recognized my i1 Display Pro, so it puts a check mark on my device. Now, a couple of things here. Number one, I'm am actually using i1 profiler in advanced mode right there so just keep in mind if my interface looks different from you that may be the reason why secondly what i'm going to do is come in here under profiling and we're going to go ahead and use profiling as kind of like the means to do what we need to do here in terms of getting a luminance now my luminance value is already preset to 100 we're good here i'm going to go ahead and click on the benq sw270c there so that it knows it's going to measure this display and then for all the rest of a setting, I'm just gonna click next and just pass through them. I don't really care how many match, how many patches is gonna measure because it doesn't really matter to me. I just wanna get to this measurement value right down here. I just wanna get to this step right here. And once I'm here at this step, what I'll do is I'll click on start measurement. Now what I'm gonna do is take the i1 Display Pro, flip this, hang it on the screen, Another thing too that I've been telling and been sharing to people on my videos is that when you put this on your screen, you want to make sure that you tilt your screen backwards as well. This way the i1 Display Pro will lay flat on your screen and you don't get stray lights coming in because any kind of stray light could cause a contamination in the result. From here, under the Profile My Display tab, it asks you what kind of settings your display have. Primarily you have the option to check contrast, RGB controls and brightness. In this case, for my BenQ display, it already pre-checked contrast and brightness. I'm just gonna leave those at default right now. They're gonna be fine. I'm gonna go ahead and click on next. I1 Profiler right now is measuring the different colors and is gonna also measure the luminous value of the display too. So we'll wait for it a moment. And once it's done, we'll kind of go into different color modes. Now the thing that to note as well is that once you set a color mode and the corresponding luminance value, the BenQ SW series of display will keep those values specifically for those color modes. So you can come in here once and set the luminance value for all the preset color modes that you use frequently. 
Now in this case, I am in Adobe RGB and Adobe RGB default from factory from BenQ um, is set to 135 candela. Now for me, 135 is a little too bright. I like to see it a little bit darker. I like it to be around 100. So what I can do here in this case is I'll go ahead and use the new second generation hockey puck, which is really cool. The default dial here is set to do brightness, which means I don't have to go through the menu. I can just grab this and watch. I am just gonna go ahead and dial this down. Now the nice thing is that BenQ didn't set Adobe RGB to 100 so that it's blasting out full power. They set a pretty good luminance value here, but I like it to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down. Let's bring it down a little bit more here. So right now I'm achieving a luminance value of 101 and the percentage of that is around 44. Now I wouldn't worry about the percentage on the display screen so much. I just want to get the luminance correct here. So now that I have this set up to the proper luminance level, I'm going to go to my next color mode. So now I want to see how bright is my sRGB. We'll give it a second. The x ray i1 Display Pro is going to go ahead and update. So in sRGB, my luminance measure is 108, which is actually not bad. I'm going to go ahead and leave that where it is right now, and that's perfectly okay. I'm going to test the advanced black and white mode now. Let's see how bright my screen is in the advanced black and white mode. So the advanced black and white mode, the first thing you may have noticed on the camera is that the screen went much brighter. This is about 200 candela. This is about two times the brightness of any prints that you will ever do. So advanced black and white mode is really cool. It's great to see everything in true black and white. However, if you're editing black and white or if you're doing a simulated black and white with this kind of luminance, your print's always gonna turn out dark. Not a good thing to have. So what we're gonna do now is again, go in and dial the white luminance down by a whole lot in this case, by half. We're gonna finesse it a little bit here. And look at that, I'm able to achieve 100 candela for the luminous. So this is a black and white mode luminous that I have set. Now, if you want to note the number on the brightness scale, you can go ahead and do that as well. If you want to jot it down a piece of paper, next time you don't have to go through the i1 profiler or your other software to set the luminous, you can also do that too. Now, what I'm also gonna do here is since I'm already doing this, I'm gonna play with a few other color modes. The other color modes that I end up using a lot and I end up really liking for this display is a new M book color mode. It's designed to match closely or actually mimic Apple built-in display because Apple calibrated their display to DCI-P3. So essentially it's designed to mimic more of kind of like Apple custom DCI-P3 color mode. So let's go ahead and do that. Now to go into M book color mode, I have to go into I have to go into the color adjustment screen on this because all my shortcut keys, there's only three of them and I have already used those up for Adobe RGB, sRGB and black and white. So we'll go in here, I'll go into color mode and let's go down to mbook. Whoa, now if you take a look at my mbook right now, it's kind of interesting. mbook is also set to 200 candela or close to it. It's actually 198, too bright. Okay, so we're gonna bring mbook down. First of all, exit the menu. Now we're gonna bring mbook down, the brightness. So I'm just gonna dial the center wheel again. And we're gonna darken this by quite a bit. Okay, so right now in mbook mode, I'm able to achieve 101 candela. This is about the brightness of I'm actually doing proof for a photo. Now mbook color mode is really great because, well, a lot of there's a lot of people who use Apple devices, right? So if you want your picture to look correctly on an Apple device, this is one of the good color modes to use to just kind of preview what your picture will look like as if it was actually gonna be shown on an Apple device. Okay, let's do a few more color modes here just for kicks and giggles. Because we're already in here, let's just get it all done. A couple other color modes that I'm interested in, well, one of them would be Rec. 709. 
Why do I want to do Rec 709? Because I do video editing, right? I do some video editing. In fact, I'm editing this video on these BenQ screens. So I want to see how it would look in a Rec 709 color space. So I'm going to go in here. Under color adjustment, go into color mode again. And let's go to Rec 709. We're going to go ahead and commit there by pressing the center button. Now, Rec 709 is set to 72. There's a different standard um, for Rec 709 because you're doing video editing. However, if you actually decide that Rec 709 is too dark at 72 candela, you can also come in and change the brightness here a little bit too. In fact, I'm gonna just kind of make it all uniform at about 100 candela. Now, by all means, this is not the standard Rec 709 brightness that you're supposed to set to. These are just my arbitrary value that when I switch between color spaces, I want to see those kind of luminance value. But essentially, this is how you would do it. Once you're done with this, in fact, you can just take the i1 Display Pro off this display, close the lid, the screen quits and now I can move back between different color modes Adobe RGB preset already to 100 candela sRGB preset to 100 candela so for better effect what I'm going to do is show you how this looks with a picture in Lightroom let's go in there go ahead and call Lightroom up here we're going to show this picture of the black church in in Iceland again it's kind of really cool I've edited this quite a bit so it's really awesome so now this is, let's go into full screen for full effect. Yes. So this is Adobe RGB, 100 candela. This is sRGB, 100 candela. Now you're going to notice the difference between the two right away that one of them, Adobe RGB, is a lot more saturated blue. sRGB, less saturated blue. And a lot less saturated color in general because it's a smaller color space. But this is why this is a great tool to just proof your work, to just proof of what it will look like in other color spaces. And also in the advanced black and white mode, I'm going to go ahead in there now. This is the advanced black and white mode set to 100 candela. So you can kind of go in between the different color modes. Anyway, I hope that you find this video helpful in how you can customize or custom set the luminous value on the BenQ preset color mode that's built into the display. Now again, I'm, I'm going to say this. If you have the BenQ SW series of display, download Palette Master Element. Custom calibrate your display with Palette Master Element. In fact, I made a guide on how to calibrate your display, the SW series of display with Palette Master Element. You can click on the link here, or you can also find a link in the description below as well. So if you have any questions, any comment, any feedback, or any ideas for future videos, please leave them in the comment section down below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Hit on the notification bell so that you'll be updated every time I upload a new color management or just, you know, any kind of geeky photo videos like this that are really fun. And until next time, I just write. Have you ever watched Guardian of the Galaxy? Yes. You know Groot? How he's always like, I'm Groot. I should be like, I'm art. I'm art. <laughs> I'm art. <laughs>